there's a very big difference between sexual orientation and gender identity. It's not the same as being gay or lesbian. It's a very different experience. It presents very differently. The DSM-5, which is, you know, the, the kind of the clinician's manual for diagnosis, says gender identity is different from sexual orientation. Pronouns, names, and past personal histories don't need to be revised uh, when a child comes out as gay. Being gay doesn't require active participation on the part of family, friends, and loved ones. If somebody's gay, you don't have to change their name. You don't have to think, what pronoun do I use? You don't have to do anything except, yeah, well done. Nothing, you can, you can, nothing is required from anybody else. Medical transition is not the same as coming out as gay. Why? Because medical transition carries a very heavy medical burden on the body. And so if you, if you go from puberty blockers to cross sex hormones, you, your, you know, your fertility will be impact, impacted, your sexual functioning will be impacted. And I know, because I was, was that kid, I know that I couldn't have cared less. If somebody had said, you know, you won't orgasm easily, I wouldn't have even heard them. I wouldn't have even cared. I wouldn't have even known what orgasm was. And I would have been very, very uneasy around sexuality and the development. I wouldn't have wanted to talk about it. Weirdly enough, I was told I was infertile when I was 25, 25. And I was told I was infertile and I couldn't care less. I didn't care. I was like, yeah, yeah, really, really. <laughs> I didn't hear it, didn't care. By the time I was 32, I was like this, you know, breastfeeding earth mother. I, I changed a lot in that time. And, you know, I really didn't care when I was told that I could be infertile. And they were saying things like egg harvesting and I can't even hear you. <laughs> I just didn't care. I changed. So when a child says they don't care about their, their future sexuality or their future uh, fertility, I don't think it is the responsible adult's role to listen to what the child is saying at that point. We listen, but we have to make sure that we're, we remain as the adults in the room and we make sure that we understand that sometimes a child can't quite conceptualize the impact of loss of fertility when they're 12.